and you may be seated. Praise the Lord. I welcome us specially to this service this morning. And I trust the Lord that His word will come expressly to us in the name of Jesus Christ. The prophetic theme, like we heard, is world practice secures profitable living. Can somebody say that convincingly? That shall be our experiences. In this family covenant day, the world that will bring about a change in our families will locate us in the name of Jesus Christ. The teaching series for our services on Sundays is titled Unveiling Our Breakthrough Heritage in the World. And this morning we are beginning with part one. Please hear me carefully this morning. Our inheritance, your inheritance and my inheritance are locked up in the word of God. It is only accessible by revelation. The secret things belong to God. The things that are revealed belong unto us and our children. What are revelations? Revelations are the secrets of God revealed to us. Revelation, in another word, is what you might want to call as insight. And I define insight as sight on the inside. We have external sight and we have internal sight. So when you are able to see beyond what the external sight can see, then it is said that you have Insight. Revelations, hear me this morning, are secrets of change. And change means growth. Anybody not changing is not growing. When you are growing, you are changing. Look at a toddler. Look at a baby. When the child is changing, when the child is growing, he or she is changing. Revelations bring about change. For we beholding you must see the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed from one image to another by the glory of God. Revelation is the secret of change. Change brings growth. Hear me? A person not changing is not growing. Quote me anywhere. And a person not growing is a person lacking revelations. So if you must grow, you need revelation. And revelation will give you change. And change will give you growth. Our inheritance are locked up in the world and only accessible by revelations. But hear me. To change your life, you need your own revelation. Arise, shine. For what? By no, our light is come. Are you here? Arise, shine, for our light is come. No, sir, no, man. 
thy light is come. And until your own specific light comes, there is no rising and there is no shining. But I know in this service your own light is coming. Let me hear, believe me, amen. But what is light? How does it connect to revelation? Hear me. Revelation turns the written word to light. When you have a revelation of the written word, it turns the written word to light in your spirit. And light is a key secret of grace. And you know, in the kingdom of God, you can amount to nothing but grace. So if you need grace, then you need light. No wonder the Bible says in Acts 20 verse 32, Now, brethren, I commend thee to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that among them which are sanctified hear me if you are not sanctified you may not be satisfied the inheritance is among them that are what sanctified. But see the access to the inheritance in that scriptures. Let's split that scriptures. The number one process to receive our inheritance is I commend you to God. That is come to God. Apostle Paul said there is a plan to give you an inheritance. So I commend you or I recommend you to God. So the process for receiving our inheritance begins with coming to God. And what is the next process? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. That is when you come to God, begin to locate the word. There are many who come to God and don't look for the word anymore. They are born again. They have come to God. But they don't search for the word. You come to God. And to the word of his grace. The Holy Spirit ministered this to me a few days ago. That you don't just read the word. For information. Or for knowledge. As good as they are, you read the word for impartation of grace. The word of his grace. So if you are looking for grace, look at the word. As you are studying the word, there is an infusion of grace. And when you look at the word, season with grace. <laughs> then you can minister grace to your hearers. That is why it's good to sit in an atmosphere where the word of God is taught with grace. Without your name, you are connecting grace. Because the word season with grace, coming with grace, is what? Imparting grace on the hearers. So by your appearing here this morning, you are what? Soaking into grace. I see the grace of God multiplying in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's the next process? I commend it to God and to the word of his grace. Look at the next step. Which is able to build you up. So any time you find grace, you are built up. Grace is our builder and prepares us 
qualifies us for the inheritance. You begin to walk in grace after a while. Development starts to take place. Change starts to take place. Then you are no more a child for a hair. As long as he's a child, different not from a servant, do he be Lord of all. But what is that that graduates the child to the son? Grace. Somebody say grace. grace. Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by what? The grace of God. So you come to God, go for the word, the word you look at grace, and grace builds you up and see the next step, the last step there. And to give you somebody say, Give me Lord. This is the missing link. The inheritance is waiting for our build up. Zion is built up. Zion will not appear in glory. So don't trivialize the necessity for build up. Your inheritance and my inheritance is at the mercy of our build up. Is somebody here this morning? I decree. That grace will continue to multiply in our lives. It is the hand of grace located via the word and the spirit of God that gives us that which pertains to us. Second Peter 1 verse 3 According as his divine power which works through grace had given unto us all things, what to say, all things that pertain unto life and godliness, my God, through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Please hear me. When we are built up, what is ours are given to us cheaply and freely. What more? Revelations are keys of the kingdom that opens. Man to Sakata. I see that door opening for you. In the name of Jesus. Revelations are keys of the kingdom that opens and no one can shout. I like this. When God reveals a thing to you, it is irreversible. It is what? There is only one person that can reverse it. It's not the devil. It's not God. It is you. How? If you reverse from it. What did I say? If you reverse from it, you reverse it. That is, if you turn your back at it, if you neglect it, revelations are keys. But hear me this morning. Somebody is saying, I have a revelation, but I'm going through serious contention. I'm going through serious opposition. God revealed some things to me. The contention is attempting to confront you, to drop what was revealed to you. But the devil came too late. No contention can reverse what you refuse to give up. Oh, I like Ezekiel 30, Ezekiel 21, verse 27.
Praise the Lord. Please, your eye must not be dim. What am I saying? Be alert. Are you with me? Be what? You can sleep, but let your eyes be opened. <laughs> be in the spirit. Give God a clap of him. Ezekiel what? 21 verse 27. When God wants to overturn, you want to sleep? Say, God forbid. <laughs> I will overturn. Kata, kata, ta, 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 ta. Overturn. Overturn it. This one is just for somebody. Because there has been a contention over what belongs to you. And God is saying, relax, I will overturn it. It doesn't matter how they do the shortlisting and your name is no more there. Hey, he said, I will overturn it. They say you are no more a candidate for the position. Jehovah said what? I will overturn it. They wrote to a letter and said no. Your application is unsuccessful. That baby is a bastard. It is overturned. If what is revealed to you is not what you are seeing, then what you are seeing is temporary. It will be overturned. Say, I serve an overturning God. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I can see everything done now. Everything. Everything. This morning, I want to hurry up. Matthew 16, verse 19. And I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Revelation, remember, are keys. Revelations are what? Keys. When you have the revelation, you have the key. I say, I will give unto thee keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you know what the scripture they say? He say you can be on earth and operate as a heavenly citizen. That is, the key I give you is heavenly key, but you are operating it on the earth. Do you know what that means? I give you keys of kingdom of heaven for you to open doors on the earth. So you are working on the earth like an earthly citizen, but you are a heavenly occupant. Is it not occupants that have keys? If you are not occupying the house, sir, they won't give you key. So when you say we are seated in heaven, you know what that is? That is, you are imposing heavenly jurisdiction on earth. And you are not operating normal. Kata kuka pata. That is why some people will meet with me. By the grace of God, we are familiar with such here. And before they talk, say, go and come back with your testimony. And they will return. You know what just happened? I just applied heavenly key on earth here. Because that key of heaven is the master key on earth. 
<laughs> There's no door you can open on it. If you have heavenly key, you can knock and unlock. And that is the strength of what revelation. But assessing our breakthrough heritage in the world, let's quickly look at some of the what revelations we must hold on to, some keys we must guard jealously. Some keys to hold on to. Number one, by redemption, Kato Kukapata we share divinity with God. Come on. Sharing divinity with God gives us dominion on the earth. Oh my God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6 and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. How is that made possible? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 whereby given unto us exceeding great and what precious promise these promises are great isn't it for you to have the key of heaven is that a small thing right, they are great and precious that by this year my blood partakers of the divine nature we partake of divine nature. If you have a part with God at all, you partake of his part. If you have a part with God, you take his nature. Please hear me. One key reason Jesus came was to reveal to man that God can operate in human cloak. He was God. He appeared as man. He was still man, but he didn't lose divinity. Divinity was hidden in humanity. To demonstrate to us that you can be a man and carry God. Because he came as the last Adam. The first Adam, like we know, was originally created as God the man. So the intention of God was to extend the rulership of heaven to earth. He said, let us what? make man in our image. That let's make another being like us. But let him be in the form of man. So the intention was you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and what? God the man. That is why a third of you, one third of you is what is God. Isn't it? The Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit. So one third of you is God. So we share. Don't ever look yourself, look at yourself as an ordinary man. That is the greatest what revelation that Jesus Christ brought. Bro, don't you know you are God? John chapter 10, verse 1, 35. And he called them God. Look at it. He called them what? Unto whom the word of God came. He was telling them. He wasn't referring to himself, he was telling them. Can you put the amplified of that same translation? Beautiful. If you call them gods, who are the them? The men, the people he was talking to. They were the ones he was calling 
gods. Men, look at it. He called them gods. Men. You see that? He called them gods. Men to whom the word of God came. That is, if the word comes to you, you become God. Your Godness is waiting for your revelation. This is why we don't manifest our divinity. Because we don't pay attention to the source of the divinity. Jesus Christ said, John 10 verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might what? Have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. So that means you can have life and you can increase it. But how? He said the thief cometh not but for to steal. So you see, until the thief steals the word, he can't kill. Until the thief steals the word, he can't kill. Until the thief steals the word, he can't destroy. So Jesus Christ came and said, look, I came for you to have life. And this life is hidden in the world. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the world. The world, the world was with God. And the world was God. The same was in the world beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Oh, see verse 4. In him was life. So where is the life now? I came that you may have life. But see where the life is. In him was life. And the life was the light of man. And he came as the word. That word is the life. That should be the light of man. So the more of the word you take in. The more of the realm you take in. Your life content is increasing. So it can flow from having life. And having it abundantly. If I were you, this month, I chew the word. Are you still here? You are sure you are not sleeping? You are sure your eyes clear now? Give God a clap of faith. So, number one, we say we share divinity with God. Number two, we are born again as supernatural being. We have explained that. But let me just add to this. If everything about your life and my life is natural, we are not tapping into our supernatural root. John chapter 3 verse 8. The wind blew it where it listed. Thou heareth the sound thereof, and cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone born of the Spirit. He compared us to the wind. Everyone born of the Spirit. If the Spirit gives birth to something, it will be what? It will be Spirit. And he said, if you understand yourself as a spirit, you are like wind. That means you are unstoppable. That means you can't be trapped. <laughs> if wind is coming here now, and you put a barrier, what will you to deflect? <laughs> that is, the devil tried to block you, and then the way double it just open. What was meant for evil is turning for your good. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are supernatural beings. And we are born again as kings to reign on the earth. 
Revelation chapter 5, 9 to 10. And they sung a new song. Somebody singing a new song. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. But you will sing the new song when you take the book. That was how they sung the new song. They took the book, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. And you say, He has made us kings and priests to reign upon the earth. I think that's verse 10. So we are redeemed to reign on the earth. What more? We are redeemed to be prosperous. So what they say, prosperity is good. It's better than poverty. Do you agree? <laughs> Praise God. We are redeemed to be prosperous. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. I had trouble with that scripture. I had trouble with it. And I asked the Holy Ghost. How can is it not someone that is rich that should make me rich? How can somebody be poor and then through the poverty of the person I become rich? Do poor men make people rich? To be rich to make another rich. And here the Bible says he was rich, but he became poor. So that through his poverty, and the Holy Spirit began to explain what that poverty meant. It was an exchange of glory. In Philippians chapter 2. Proverbs 5, all the way to 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, that was where his riches was, thought it not able to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The poverty was in the likeness of men. Was rich as God, man was poor as men. So to make them rich, God had to become man so that man would become God. That is the poverty that made us rich. So redemption changed our status. Oh, I don't know about you. I can't be poor. Except the sacrifice on the cross can be undone. If it can't be reversed, it's too late. Because I am born again. And I carry God on my inside. That's who we are. That's who we are. That's who we are. If you have an understanding of that, let me rush. I was tempted to dig in more, but because of time, let me rush. Are you here? <laughs> Give God a clap of friend. But to access our, her our heritage in the world, we must be born again. We must be what? To be born again means is to be born from becoming only man to becoming only man God. If you are not born again, you are a mere man. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He 
seed that is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you are born again, you add the spirit of God. You add God to your flesh. So you become man God. <laughs> are you with me? Number two, what must we do? We must continue to be spiritual. Please hear me. Your spirituality and my spirituality is our security. First Corinthians two, verse fourteen. But a natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Natural men we make and call as foolishness the things of God. It doesn't make sense naturally. And if you are here, if you are not born again and you don't understand what I'm saying, say, Pastor, what are you saying? We are all men. That's natural thinking, natural man. The natural man can receive the things of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are what? Spiritually descend. So you need to be spiritual to discern or understand these revelations or these truths. And what is spirituality? Spirituality, in the words of our Father, is scripturality. Is what? You might not find that word in the dictionary. Let me warn you ahead of time. Spirituality is scripturality. And what is scripturality? Practice of scriptures. Word practice. Does what? Guarantees profitable living. Scripturality is word practice. Give God a clap of free. Welcome to Covenant Family Day. We serve a family loving God. The first family God created enjoyed blessings from the Lord and God has not changed. When he created the man and the woman in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 to 28 the Bible said and God created man in his own image in the image of God, male and what female created he them, the next verse. And God blessed them. The them is the family. That is why the devil is after the family. Because the, there is a level of blessing that is not on him. There is a level of blessing that is not on her. There is a dimension of blessing that is on them. He blessed them. But thank God who sets the solitary in families. So if family life is your desire, from this service you are set into it. But beyond that, you come from a family. You do not just appear like Melchizedek. You know him? No father, no mother, no descent. So you come from the family. So the blessing of the family is resting upon you afresh from this service in the name of Jesus. When God saves us, he saves us with our entire household. As we saw in the case of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 24, all the way to 44, Cornelius was saved, and him and his entire household. So, what should we do? Demand for the salvation of every member of your household that is not yet born again, for that is the will of God. Every member be saved. Say after me, say, Lord. 
let your grace that brings salvation appear to every member of my family in the name of Jesus Christ so shall it be give God a clap of faith and to secure the blessing upon the family we must do the following enter into a covenant to serve God and the interest of his kingdom that is represent your family before God and as you serve him your family has access to the flow of the salvation of God through you he's always looking for a man Joseph was the access to his generation as a whole and I see you as the access to your family in the name of Jesus and what more open to receive and believe every blessing proclaimed on our lives and families in this service can I hear believing amen? amen in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 to 20 for God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he hath blessed. And I cannot reverse it. Lift up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree the release of your blessing over every family presented here. Amen. The blessings of heaven as ordained for each family before the foundation of the earth. That which was in your mind, I decree to release in its fullness. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Amen. Any negative recovering decima in your family from today they are terminated in the name of Jesus Christ in Numbers 23 verse 23 for surely there is no enchantment against Jacob hmm. neither is there any divination against Israel according to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel what had God wrought you will not hear about the bad news of the devil in your family anymore. You will only hear, see what God has done. You will only hear, see what God has done. So shall it be. It's a turn around for you. In Jesus' name, give God a clap of faith. What more today is also what? An anointing service. But the leading of the Holy Ghost to the apostle over this commission every Sunday all through this month will be an anointing service <laughs> to destroy every hidden yoke. We might not know some yokes, but the yoke destroyer knows it. It's the Holy Ghost. But what is in the anointing? The power of God that destroys all satanic yokes. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. Because of what? The anointing. This anointing coming upon you today. Any known or unknown yoke shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is in the anointing? The healing power of God. Referring to Jesus now in Mark chapter 6 verse 7. And then we see verse 11 to 12. That was Jesus Christ. He called unto them the twelve and began to send them forth two by two. And gave them power over unclean spirits. And what was the outcome? Verse 12. And they went out and preached 
Hallelujah. Verse 13. Yes. And they cast out what? Many devils. What do you need to cast out a devil? It's power. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. Over all the power of the enemy. Isn't it? Uh, you need power against his power. And they began to demonstrate power using what? Verse 13. And anointed many with oil that were sick and what healed them. He gave them power, but they used oil as the instrument. So what does that say? The power is in the oil. The healing power. If anybody is sick in any way today, by this anointing today, you are healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. What more? The breakthrough power of God is in it. And finally, the miracle working power of God is in the anointing. Rise up on your feet. Give God praise and magnify Him. Holy Ghost power, power for Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power, power for me. As since the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. As in the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. If you are here in this service, the qualification for this power, like you have heard in the message, is to first come to God. Until you are born again, you can be a candidate for this power. But it is available to whosoever will say, Jesus, come into my heart. So if you are here in this service and you want to surrender to the Lord, or you want to dedicate your life by any means, it's the best decision of your life. Only a fool is shameful of what is painful. You want to surrender to Christ? Put your hand on your chest, wherever you're standing, with your head bowed as a sign of surrender, and pray this prayer after me, meaning it from the depth of your heart. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you today. I confess you as Lord. I believe you died for my sins. And on the third day, you rose again for my justification. Right now I ask for your saving grace to appear to me. Save me, Lord, today and help me to follow you the remaining days of my life. From today, I am born again. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. For all those who pray that prayer,